Hi, I'm Matt Elia, the Assistant Airport Manager of the Mansfield Airport. Welcome to today's episode of Aviation Adventures. Today we're going to be talking about the opportunities in general aviation right here at the Mansfield Airport and our other airports like it. I'd like to welcome in my two guests, Tara and Mike, who both have done a great job of taking advantage of some great opportunities in aviation. So Mike, I'll start with you. You and I first met when you were an aviation student at Bridgewater State, then college, now university. Mm -hmm. We were members of the competitive flight team together. I remember you were very passionate about it then. And then we worked together at Mansfield when you were an operations <clears throat> person. So what other aviation experience have you had since then? Since then, since my days at Bridgewater, um, just the, you know, um, got my private pilot's license when I was at Bridgewater, my instrument rating, my commercial pilot's license, um, did the flight team. And when I became an upperclassman, a junior and a senior, I participated in uh, some internship opportunities that were available. Um, one of which at a company called Magellan Jets, which is in Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, Magellan Jets is a, a charter, a jet charter and membership company. So they arrange private jet travel on corporate aircraft. Uh, they make it available to like the retail world. Okay. Um, so I interned there in 2012 and uh, that turned into a full-time position where I work now as a flight support specialist. So um, as a flight support specialist, uh, I manage uh, almost every aspect of a book trip. So um, all the logistics, the ground transportation, the catering, um, the flight tracking, I deal with the clients one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm kind of like a liaison between the operator of the aircraft and the, and the end user of the client. Um, in addition to that, um, I love to fly recreationally. I use my, my pilot's licenses to um, go on fun day trips, to take friends flying, family members flying. Um, and uh, I also do some volunteering. And, That's excellent. Uh, yeah. And I think it's great to show that not everyone that uses the local airport is a rich lawyer or business person. Right. Uh, those of us that are young in the world can still take advantage of uh, general aviation. Mm -hmm. So Terry, you're not a pilot, but what is your aviation experience? So I um, have grown to love aviation through Mike's passion for it. Um, I have known him since he's gotten all of his um, pilot's licenses. So I've really grown to love aviation, um, to know a lot about it. And so I um, go flying with Mike often. Um, and I also volunteer as well, um, just like Mike does. So we volunteer together um, at an aviation-based charity. An aviation based, so what is the aviation based charity? So it's called Above the Clouds, um, and Above the Clouds is an organization that is um, focused around um, bringing uh, joy to children uh, through the wonder of flight, um, and uh, they bring um, they bring children up for you know an hour or two, uh, children that are um, ill or disabled or uh, disadvantaged. Um, so it's a great uh, program that, um, that just offers uh, children an opportunity to en enjoy flying and, um, and yeah. So. That sounds like an excellent <laughs> use of your time as a volunteer and aviation as a good way to benefit the community. So Mike, what is it that you and Tara do for Above the Clouds? So we're, we act as day of flight flight coordinators. Okay. So um, what happens is the, the kids come with their, with their parent or guardian. Mm -hmm. and we make these really cool signs that say welcome Matt or whoever it might be <clears throat> and uh, you know we make them feel welcome at the airport you know uh, there's usually a, a big group of volunteers there to welcome them and make them you know feel at home and feel a little bit comfortable because going for a ride on a small airplane is probably something they've never done before and they're a little bit nervous sure and uh, they're also nervous to see all those that big group of people there so uh, we try to make them feel as comfortable as possible um, bring them up into the, into the pilot lounge and there is where they meet their pilot and they plan their flight. And typically a, a flight plan for a, a dream flight is what they call it, is uh, they take them up to Boston and do a, an aerial tour of Boston, see Fenway Park, uh, Logan Airport, the Prudential Building, and then they come down and see Gillette Stadium. And then they typically will fly over their house or their school or another area of interest that, that fascinates them. And then they land. And uh, throughout the course of the flight, they actually have an opportunity to steer a little bit and see what flying an airplane is all about. And uh, it, it's really designed to, to help alleviate them of whatever hardships are going on in their life and just bring as much joy and hope to them as possible. Well, that's so it's excellent. a great organization. And I, I really enjoy the fact that it uses general aviation. That's mm -hmm. one thing that I always try and stress with people is that flying is not just the yacht club at the airport or being an airline pilot. There's a lot of other opportunities. And I think volunteering is a, 
a great way to take advantage of that. So, Mike, we went to school for aviation. Mm -hmm. Terry, you also went to Bridgewater. You are an aviation yes. student, but mm -hmm. you've involved aviation in your education, too, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. So I, I currently go, um, I just finished my second year at Suffolk Law School. Um, and so with my passion for aviation, uh, coupled with my um, passion for law, here I am at law school. Um, this summer I'm interning at the um, Federal Aviation Administration um, in their regional counsel's office. So I think it's a, it's a really cool opportunity to, like you were saying, you know, another opportunity to bring aviation somewhere else in life. So I'm really able to continue my passion for aviation in my job, which I love. So. Um, <laughs> So that's, yeah, that's how I'm furthering aviation into my life, I guess you could say. And that's awesome, and it's another opportunity. I mean, as a law student who really, you know, doesn't have a lot of aviation experience in terms of flying, you found a way to be involved with aviation. I think there are a lot more opportunities in aviation than people think. You know, it's not just, like I said, being an airline pilot. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the law and flying, what are your mm -hmm. other interests, the two of you? Um, we don't have a huge list of hobbies. We're pretty simple <laughs> people. Um, no, we like we, we really enjoy um, just out, being outdoors. You know, going for day trips to different coastal cities around New England. We love going for hikes. Um, we love being outdoors, playing tennis. Um, I'm a big golfer. I'm trying to get Tara into golf this summer so we can play together someday. Uh, she she's getting the hang of it. Um, okay. In addition to that, um, we both love to cook. Uh, that's an indoor activity that we like to do. Uh, finding new recipes. Um, experimenting with different things. Uh, we just bought a slow cooker last week, which we're really excited about. Um, and that's that's about it. You know, we love being with friends and family and uh, just enjoying ourselves in our free time. Well, we forgot to mention that um, in tennis, as long as we've been playing tennis together, he has never won a single match. So oh, he forgot to mention it. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to, we love the it's healthy competition. So. It's, yeah. it's good to put that in, right. you know. But he'll have golf now, which yes. can yeah. be maddening yes. in itself. Yes. But it's very a, true. A good uh, a good use of time when we're not flying. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of those things, you know, they they form interesting uh, things. Going hiking in an interesting city, mm -hmm. or but I understand that you have a bit of a pet project that combines a couple of your passions and uh, cooking and aviation, which aren't necessarily two things that I thought would have really gone well together until I found out about this, which was really interesting. So how is it that you combined cooking and aviation and really created your own aviation-themed opportunity here? So uh, several months ago, actually the concept started last towards the end of last year. Um, we both obviously really love aviation. We love to cook and we love animals. So we were trying to think of a way to kind of infuse all that together. And we came up with uh, airplane shaped dog treats, which are very unique in themselves, but they're also unique because they only have three ingredients just rolled oats, peanut butter, and water. So they're cool looking and they taste great and they're really, really healthy. And uh, the name of the company is Pups with Altitude. So there's a bit of a play on words there with the whole aviation theme. And uh, yeah, it's been going great. You know, we have a website, we, we sell them on pupswithaltitude.com, um, you know, where you can order them. And, you know, we sell them at various, we're, we plan on putting them into local airports for, you know, pilots that have dogs can could buy them as they stroll through the airport on the way out to the airplane or, sure. you know, like Mansfield Airport's a great example. People come uh, down to the airport with their dogs to do some plane watching and why not buy some dog treats while you're there, so. And I, I think it's a great idea and what I really like is you created your own opportunity within aviation. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you found a way to derive some type of business. Mm -hmm. So even when it wasn't an opportunity that existed before, you found a way to create it. And the other thing is, I'll say that my dog Bella gives your <laughs> project <laughs> two paws up. Great. She was very excited <laughs> about it. Uh, so do you already do this or is this a concept? Uh, no, we put it into motion about three months ago. So we, over the winter, we, we spent time developing our website and uh, kind of creating the organization for it. Um, and then about three months ago, we launched our website, pupsaltitude.com, where you can you know, buy them and have them shipped directly to you. Um, they're currently for sale in a couple of stores in, the, in Boston's North End. Um, and you know, we, we plan on expanding the product a little bit. And it's just a part-time venture now. Um, but you know, we'll see where it goes. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, it's a lot sure. of fun. That's yeah. that's what the purpose of it was, mm -hmm. to kind of combine all of our passions and have fun with it. Well, I think it's great because you, you created something that didn't exist. And mm -hmm. so when, when people talk about wanting to come into aviation and get into it, and mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of these people that come in, maybe they want to start flight lessons at the Mansfield Airport, mm -hmm. or are just interested in maybe aviation management or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're always looking for different things to do. And sometimes it's not 
what already exists, but something that they're able to create. And I think mm -hmm. that that's a great example. So I know that you both do a lot of volunteer work with Above the Clouds, mm -hmm. and you have pups with altitude. So do you think there's any way to maybe turn the pet project that might be a little business into a volunteering venture too, to use it to give back to the community and use aviation to help the community some more? Do you think there's a, a Absolutely. Um, you know, like we said, it's just a part-time pet project, like you said now. <laughs> um, but you know, eventually once the wheels got, get moving and it takes off, excuse the pun, once it takes <laughs> off a little bit, and becomes a little bit more sustainable. Um, we would love to actually team up with Above the Clouds and, and uh, be able to donate a portion of the proceeds from the sales of the treats to, to the benefit of that organization so more kids can go flying and experience the joy of small aircraft flight. Um, another thing we'd like to do is there's another charitable organization called Pilots and Paws. Okay. And uh, it's an organization that transports um, homeless and injured dogs and other animals um, to you know loving homes mm -hmm. and places where they can get help and I think it would be kind of cool to be able to donate a bag to every flight so the makes the dogs feel a little bit more comfortable and enjoy the ride because oh, I'm excellent. sure it, it can be a nerve-wracking experience for a human and a dog to fly in an airplane right <laughs> yeah especially so. if you're not used to <laughs> exactly it. I, could, I could certainly see yeah that. Mm -hmm. so um, that once it takes off and it becomes a little bit more sustainable that's something we'd like to do well, that's excellent, and I think you're both great role models for showing the opportunities that exist, whether it's educational, whether you're an aviation student or not, uh, you know, beyond learning to fly and creating a business or volunteering, using your time in a positive way. So thank you very much for joining great. me today. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks great so much. To have you. Yeah, and uh, thank you to everyone else. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Aviation Adventures. We look forward to seeing you again, and uh, as always, feel free to come down and visit the uh, Mansfield Airport. We're always there.